in a couple of weeks, I'm going to get married. And the journey towards getting a partner and being able to marry the girl of my dreams. It started around 2011 when I figured out this thing called game, which involved a lot of manipulation, a lot of playing with emotions of girls and using them as objects to get experience and use them as tools to develop the inner self. That's how it started. Around 2011, I remember I had just finished one of the greatest papers that I ever wrote, published in Journal of Neuroscience. I was so happy and I felt very unaccomplished. And at that time, there was a girl who I really liked. And the way I expressed my love towards her, now that I look back, it was a very beta male, submissive, very pussy thing to do, but I did that. And uh, that's not the story I want to tell you today, but that I will tell you that sometime in, in the future. But today's story, as I'm about to become a husband in a couple of weeks, I want to look back and confess certain events that I'm not proud of, that I regret, some mistakes I made on how I treated women, how I used them as objects, how I used them as tools just to learn and get experience in the bedroom, become confident, and how I played with different emotions of different people, men and women both, but especially women. And the story for today involves a girl who I never really liked, I never really felt sexual attraction towards, but other guys did. So I used many, many tricks over years to win her over, then eventually break her heart. And it was really, really sad. And in fact, just a couple of nights ago, I told this to my wife-to-be, and uh, I came clean with her. You know, I've always felt that there's this thing called the dark side in all of us, right? The dark triad, traits, the Machiavellian, Machiavellianism, narcissism, and psychopathy. And I always wondered, there's 4% of people in the world that have this, and each of us have a little bit of this in us. And as I confess today about what I did, I want to get into why I am a narcissist still and, and how I was maybe 10 times more narcissistic at that time and how I was Machiavellian in, in which I manipulated emotion, manipulated people and I was a psychopath because I lacked empathy and didn't really feel emotion. Even when I was doing my experiments with monkeys in the lab, they were feeling pain they were feeling anxiety. They were making rocking actions like autistic children do. And I just didn't feel emotion. I laughed. I just wanted the goal. And I was so rational at that time. And now that I'm a little bit more loving, a little bit more emotional, a little bit more in touch with my feminine side, I look back at those times and I remember one particular time this was during my grad school, my first year in grad school at McGill. I was a graduate student, a, a master student in neuroscience, and I had participated in a dance group in Montreal. And there was this one girl who was not part of our dance group, but she was some other, she was doing other things. She was a, not a freshman at the time, she was a junior or senior. I'm not going to reveal her name because I, I don't want to give her her identity or, and I don't want her to feel bad. She might have a family right now. She might have kids and I don't want any disrespect towards anyone, but I still have to come clean and apologize. So all the guys 
really loved this girl. Like they, I remember two people specifically who failed their first semester because they could not stop thinking about her. And, they, and, and I heard these stories firsthand from them as well as from other people. And I, I knew what this girl looked like. I knew how good of a dancer she was. I knew how, you know, she had won like pageants and different awards and stuff. So on paper, she was really, really pretty and, and, and attractive. But for me, I didn't feel, you know, there's this thing I say that in order for me to feel really that, 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 that sexual vigor that virility towards a girl, she has to have this slut face. You know, I always say, but I, I just want all the girls that are in my life to have this slut face. She did not have a slut face. Her face was a little bit too, um, I guess, innocent or angelic, but, but like more innocent. Because you can be an angel and have a slut face. And so I sort of made it my subconscious goal to win this girl, to fuck this girl one day, to, to like, get this girl to submit to my every will, right? To, to get this girl to be, bow down to me, basically. I had made that my goal. And so I, you know, I participated in this dance. I, we went to different, different dance shows. We did charity events and competitions and so on and so forth. And, and I, was, I had a lot of fun. And I, I wasn't doing the dance to like, for this girl because she wasn't even in there. It, it was just because I wanted to become a better dancer and I really love Bollywood dancing. Now what happened is I was using certain tactics that I had learned from pickup gurus because I was a pickup artist at that time, right? As this tight, you know, the, 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 this video is from pickup artist to husband. And I had learned that in order to win girls over, you have to ignore them, insult them, be rude to them, give them negative emotion, you know, give them this roller coaster of emotion because girls really love to feel the negativity and positivity both, right? Hence the roller coaster. And especially the pretty girls who get lots of attention from men, they want, in order for them to feel attracted or in order for them to feel that sexual, that sexual connection, for you to be sex worthy, you have to insult and be rude to them. This is what I had learned. Right. And obviously, like, I didn't know who else to believe because I was a virgin at that time. I was two years away from getting my PhD. I was about 29 years old. And I had heard about this girl. Right? She, she was a virgin as well. Uh, she had not kissed a guy before. She had not even touched a guy before. You know, I had heard these stories from people and I really wanted to win this girl. It was like a challenge that I gave myself. So the first time I met this girl, I still remember, we were in the elevator and one of my really good friends lived in the same building as me and her best friend was this girl that I'm telling you about. I'm not gonna reveal her name, but, but one of my really good friends was best, best friends with her. So one time in the elevator in my building, I saw this girl and I was already prepared. My body was prepared because I had read so many books you know, real social dynamics books and David D'Angelo and Ross Jeffries and uh, a mystery and all the pickup gurus. I had read all this and I had realized that I just, if I ever encounter this girl in real life, I have to ignore her. I have to insult her. I have to somehow be rude to her, but in a subtle way, in a smart way. And I was already very like conniving little bitch, right? I, I have this, this tendency of being very naughty and, and, uh, and, and trickery, like a Woody Woodpecker, Pink Panther type fellow. And so I saw her in the elevator with this, you know, one of my really good friends who lived in my building and she introduced me. He's like, hey, meet, you know, so on and so forth. And then here's Farhan, one of my really good friends. And in the elevator, I just did this thing like, uh, hey. And I continued to talk to my friend. I completely ignored this girl and made her feel like a fool. It gets worse. In one event when it was a dance show, which she, this, this girl that I'm telling you about, she was the big part of this dance show. She was like the star of this dance show. And I went there to see her. But I knew that if I ever encountered her, I was gonna ignore her or I was gonna insult her in some way and make her feel like shit. 
And I had invited two of my Indian friends, two girls who I knew very well, not, not, the, not the girl who lived in my building, but two other Indian girls. And I'd invited them because I wanted to make this girl jealous, to somehow make her feel that she's not worthy of me, right? Because she was getting so much attention from guys, I thought this was the only way for it to go. So lo and behold, we go to this party, me and my two girl, you know, the, the two friends who are Indian, who are, are my, my friends, two girls, we go to this party and I'm dancing with these two girls while this, this main girl is doing her show. And she does fantastic. She's like the star of the show, man. She comes down and she comes to meet uh, not these two girls, but her best friend who lives in my building. She was also there. So it was me, three girls, and now this girl is coming towards us. She says hello. And I completely ignore her. I just keep dancing with my two Indian friends. And I catch a glimpse of her face, just like from the, my peripheral vision, and she does not look happy. Like, she looks sad, man. She's just performed one of the best, perf like, one of the best dances ever, and she looks really, really anxious and sad. And I got so happy, because I was like, you know what? I'm following the fucking book. I'm following to, to the T. And it's not the first time I've done this. I've done this multiple times with uh, pretty good success. <laughs> so this happened. And then well, it gets way worse, man. Way, way worse. Or better. If, if you're a psychopath, it gets better. So then what happened is she is about to go back to her country of India. And I'm still in Montreal, you know, I'm doing my grad school. And uh, she, she leaves and we continue to chat on Facebook Messenger. Now, I don't have the exact story right. Like, some things may have happened in different sequences. But I'm going to tell you all of those things. But I may get the sequence jumbled up, but I'm going to do my best. Because this was literally more than 10 years ago. So... She goes back to India. We're still chatting on Facebook Messenger. And in a semester, she's going to come back anyway, right? So I do, my, I do my dances, you know, with the Bollywood group. And I'm having a lot of fun. And it's great. Now, the semester she comes back, I'm still part of that dance group. Because I was part of that group for a year. She comes back. And she's only back for like, I think a month, three weeks to a month for her cousin's wedding. She had come back and then she was going to go back to India because uh, she was taking like a, a year off to do dancing there and learn from a guru there. And she comes back to Montreal and it's her cousin's wedding. So she gives me a, a, a chat on uh, Facebook and she says, hey, Farhan. I'm looking for a dance partner. Would you like to be my dance partner? Now, she's way better a dancer than me. Like, I'm a nobody when it comes to any kind of dancing. But I literally thought, cha-ching. This is my chance. And remember, I'm not sexually attracted to her like I am to like the slut face girls. I'm kind of attracted to her. And I want to still pursue it because I want to win and I want to dominate. So this is my chance. So I asked her, why are you asking me? Out of all of your th millions of friends, why are you asking me? So she's like, Farhan, you're the guy who's gonna tell me yes or no on the spot and not fuck around and slack off and, and flake. So I told her, you're right, and the answer is a yes. So I said yes. And, and I was part of this dance presentation for the wedding and we spent three weeks preparing for that. So I was very close to this girl for those three weeks. Like we were preparing in the evenings. So I, was, I had my grad school, I had my monkey experiments, you know, my electrophysiology, all my PhD stuff. And then during the, no, this was, this was my master's. It wasn't my PhD yet. But during the evenings, I would go and do the dance practice. So during those three weeks, I became really close to her and almost made myself convinced that I love her. Like Bollywood, Shah Rukh Khan romance style. I made myself believe that I love this girl because I wanted to win her so bad. And
And in these three weeks, even though we were dancing together, there was no romance, there was no... Uh, uh, I was just playing it chill and just dancing and nothing else. So, we did the dance presentation. It went amazing. This was the night of the wedding. And then one of my friends, one of my boy, the guy friends, boyfriends, guy friends, I told him, hey man, I want to express my love towards her. What should I do? And he told me, tonight's the last night. You either tell her now or you never tell her. So I went outside after the wedding was over. You know, she introduced me to her parents, blah, blah, blah. And I told her how I felt about her. And uh, it was very romantic. And then afterwards, I walked her home. I, 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 she told me, you're, you're so romantic. You're, you're like Shah Rukh Khan. I, I feel so overwhelmed. I, there was no kiss. There was no make out, none of that. I uh, kissed her on the cheek. I let her go and she went back to India. Now it gets very interesting now. While she's in India, I want to continue to game her from what I learned with RSD because I'm still continuing my RSD studies. And one of the reasons I felt so much resentment towards women and why I almost wanted to take revenge on this girl is because there was another girl who was at McGill, she was a student, and a freshman at that time, who broke my heart. And I was such a beta pussy where I expressed my love towards her. She rejected me. She said, oh, to me, like I'm some little puppy. And then she went on to date some other guy who's a fucking prick. And now she's married to him. And that happened. And I even told this girl, this other girl, that this guy likes her. Like, I was, it was such a bad move. I was so honest and so innocent at that time. And I bet you that I wanted to take revenge on her by hurting some other girl. So now this other girl, now she's in India. And I am through Facebook Messenger chatting with her and really being rude. Now I want to like win her over, but I want to, because now I was getting into negative emotion with RSD. I was already in Las Vegas. I had already graduated. This is not, now years have gone by, right? So now I've already graduated uh, and now I'm in Vegas. This is now 2013. And I'm calling her a whore on Facebook Messenger while she's asking me to help her on some, some technical problem that she has at home. I'm calling her a slut. You're nothing but a slut. You're the biggest slut in the world. And she's so taken aback because no guy has ever insulted her, called her that. Every guy has been so nice to her. And I'm like this first gangster guy who, who's a PhD living in Vegas, picking up girls at the club. And, and, and she's just so in the emotional roller coaster that I think she basically fell in love with me. And the reason I know that is because she told her parents that she's in love with a Muslim boy, and obviously she's Hindu, and they did not want any of that. They're like, no, you're not gonna date a Muslim guy, this is not gonna happen. And while I was in Vegas calling her whore, she told me that she's gonna come visit me in Vegas. So she booked a flight, told, lied to her parents that she's going to visit, visit one of her friends in Atlanta. She came to Vegas to visit me and she lied to her parents and I manipulated her for years for this moment. Then she came to Vegas. I picked her up from the airport. And at that time, I was doing RSD boot camps. I was assisting RSD. You know, Todd was there, Owen was there, Julian, Alex. You know, I had met all of them. I was living with them. I was filming them. I was basically in charge of 50 students and 15 interns. So I had seen a lot of pickup going on and a lot of misogyny, a lot of treating girls like objects in the pretense of self-development and uh, you know, becoming more confident. That was the pretense. 
And you know, we were being taught looks don't matter, uh, you don't have to work out, you don't have to have good fashion, you just have to have good game. So that's what I was learning. And then this girl, she came and you know, we were gonna sleep in the same bed. I was still a virgin. I wasn't sexually attracted to her, but I, wanna, I wanted to dominate her and win her. And I remember the first night we were in bed together, I smelled her pussy. Now I know it was her pussy because <laughs> I thought it was her sweat. Like she smelled like, I didn't really know what the hell it was, but you know how girls get wet and you smell their pussy. I smelled that, but I hadn't been with a lot of girls. I didn't really know what like really strong pussy feels like. So that's what I smelled and it was really nasty. And I was like, I don't know if I want to be with this girl. And uh, the first time I kissed her, she was really bad. Like she did not know how to kiss. And at that moment, I realized that she hasn't kissed a guy before, right? But dude, even at that time, I was such in, in such a player misogyny mood that I didn't even have feelings towards her. I didn't even feel that this girl has completely given her my heart and her trust. And she thinks I'm credible and trustworthy and honest, but I'm just a dark triad, narcissistic, Machiavellian psychopath. But I still wanted to fall in love with her somehow. So that first night I tried to have sex with her. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. She had her clothes on. She was very uncomfortable, like extremely uncomfortable. She was resisting me in, in like not a fun, flirty way. And, uh, and yeah, we, 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 you know, obviously we slept in the same bed, nothing happened. We kissed. And the next day we hung out at the casinos and so on and so forth. And then this moment really crushed me. The next day, we were right in front of Caesar's Palace where the, the two uh, lions are. The back, no, uh, where are the lions? It, is it Caesar's Palace? The casino where the lions are, where, that's where we were. Right outside. And we were sitting on the bench and she told me that Farhan, I have booked my flight back to India and I'm leaving tomorrow. And by the way, something I forgot to tell you is that before she came to Vegas, she had already done research on me and she had already found out that, you know, I was doing coaching for RSD. I was part of this group and they were calling me like RSD Farhan. And, uh, and she was wondering, what is this? What the hell am I doing? I, I'm a neuroscience PhD. Why am I doing all that? Like, what the hell am I doing? It was so weird. And I told her that it's for self-development. You know, we're very good people. They're very good company. They're great. They're teaching me. Um, we're teaching guys how to be more confident and, and how to stand up for their beliefs and express themselves. And uh, I was crushed, man. I was crushed. I did my very best to talk her out of it. But then I came to the conclusion that I have to let her go. And I said, okay, I will drop you off, no problem. But my heart was broken, man. Her heart was more broken. I dropped her to the airport, she left. I talked to her one last time after she left. I was in Vegas. I still remember I had my cell phone, I was downstairs. It, it was like a green foresty type, type floor. And I talked to her for about half an hour and uh, she again told me about uh, RSD and what I did and she wasn't resentful, she wasn't rude. She was very, very unemotional, very cold. And that was the last time I ever heard from her. And every time she came to Montreal, one of my friends who knew her very well would tell me that, hey, she's here. And I would have this urge to go see her, to get the win. Like I still wanted to get the win somehow. Like the dopamine was so strong, I wanted to keep going. I was like addicted to that. But I haven't heard from her since. 
And uh, there's a lot of learning lessons, man. There's a lot of learning lessons. For all of you who are right now trying to find the girl of your dreams or trying to sleep with as many girls as you can or have resent towards women or think that you're never going to find the, the girl that, that, that you can spend the rest of your life with or you are a virgin, you're, you're scared of sex, you have anxiety in the bedroom or you're already married and you have anxiety with your wife or you have a dysfunction in the, in the bedroom or lack confidence or, or think she's not attracted to you, whatever that is, what I would recommend, and this is what I've started doing now, is to fully express yourselves and come clean. You know, in Crime and Punishment, I don't know if you guys have read that, I don't want to give away and do a spoiler, but the main character, he goes through the whole novel with a feeling that I don't want to have towards my life. I don't want to have that in my life. I want to come clean in everything that I've done. Jordan Peterson has the self-authoring tool where first you have to talk about your past and you have to come clean with your past or there is no future. So in these videos, I want to come clean with my past. So to the girl who I hurt, I am sorry. I made a mistake. I'm very, very sorry for what I did. And I'm realizing now that I hurt your feelings. Whether I win the game or I get the, 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 the domination and submission, whether I dominate and get someone to submit to me and tap out, it's not worth it. Whatever confidence I've gained, I've gained the same amount of stress. Whatever macho alpha male feeling I've gotten, I've gotten the same amount of cortisol and the same amount of anxiety and the same amount of trauma in my body. The body keeps the score and my body has this trauma saved and stored in different parts. I want my internal state to reflect my external state. So what I've decided to do is make these videos as confessions and come clean in everything I've done, that I've hurt someone, I've made a mistake, I've taken revenge, I've been resentful, I've hated, I've backstabbed the people who have wronged me. I'm gonna come clean with that too, how they hurt me and made me sad. That's what these videos are gonna be about here. So, if you have anything to say about your life and if you wanna come clean, let me know. And we can together connect and make this world a better place, make ourselves a better place, make ourselves a better person, explore nature, explore our inner selves, breathe into the diaphragm, breathe from our nose, express ourselves fully, love and connect with the world, with fellow humans, animals, plants, and I hope that you also find the love of your life one day but that love will start with you first. This is Doc Farhan. If you want to contact me somehow, of course you can contact below, you can comment below, but you can also join my Facebook group. It's called Afro D Nation. You can find the link in the description. I would love to see you there. If you wanna boost your testosterone naturally, you wanna get your energy back, you wanna get your confidence back, but the right way, the natural way, through your heart and through love and through connection, then join me in the Facebook group and ask me anything and I will answer right away because I'm there 24 seven. Bye guys, love you and I will talk to you tomorrow.